Hello friends, we are not employed by a fan company, so let's not stop lead coding till we get there. Today we are going to do binary tree maximum path sum lead code problem and if we see some of the companies where I want to get a job who have already asked this question, there are companies like Amazon, DoorDash, Facebook, Microsoft, Google, ByteDance, TikTok, Snapchat, Twitter, Apple, Uber and LinkedIn. So that's why I am paying my utmost attention. I hope you also enjoy the video. So despite being a hard problem, this is a very well liked problem on lead code. Uh, basically, we are given the root of a binary tree and we need to return the maximum path sum for that particular non-empty path. So, we will have to understand a couple of terminologies over here. Uh, we will have to understand that what a path sum is and before we understand that, we will have to understand that what a path is. Lucky for us, we are given definition of both of them. So, a path is a binary tree sequence of nodes where uh, each pair of adjacent nodes in that particular sequence has an edge connecting them and we are also told one a very important thing that any single node in that sequence can at most appear once. And we are also given the note that it is not necessary that path has to go through the root of the node. Okay, so over here I have drawn a couple of different trees and I am going to show you some examples of what a valid path is and what an invalid path is. So first of all, this is a valid path. And for that, we'll have to understand that why this path is a valid path because all the three nodes that are connected in this particular path, they are adjacent to each other. They all have an edge connecting to them and they all appear at most once and nothing more than that. Now, this is also a valid path and this is also a valid path. This is also a valid path and this is also a valid path. Both paths are valid as well. And the path that looks like this, this is also a valid path and the path that looks like this, this is also a valid path. Now let's see some examples of an invalid path. Suppose I start of my journey over here. I go up, I go down, I go to the left uh, child and then again I try to go to the right child. Again this is an example of an invalid path because this node appears twice as well. Now we know many examples that what a valid path is. Now let's see that what the problem is actually asking us to solve. After understanding the definition of a path, we are going to understand the definition of a path sum. Basically it is the sum of all the nodes that are present inside this given path. So that is actually quite simple to understand. And the problem is actually asking us to find the maximum path sum that we can make out of given binary tree. So now I have drawn three different trees to understand the maximum path sum for each one of them. So first of all, for this particular tree, the maximum path sum is going to be this path. And why? Because all the nodes are positive and if we take the sum of these three nodes, it's actually going to be 5 plus 4 plus 9 which becomes 18 and this is what we need to return in the answer. If we take the second example, things are not as easy as the first one. Why? Because we are dealing with a negative value over here. So in this case, even if we try to do the same path that we had drawn over here, this won't work because the sum of this is actually going to be which is not the most optimal path we can achieve. The most optimal path in this case is going to be this one with, and the sum is actually going to be 5 plus 4 equals to 9 and in this case we will have to return 9. So in this case the maximum path actually is going to be this one between these three nodes. Why? Though there is a positive value over here if we were to include this positive value the path we would make would looks like this. And that would actually go through this root value which has the value of negative 11 which actually brings the total path down or total sum down. So that is why it is not in our best interest to include this node and that is why the maximum path in this case we can achieve is amongst these three nodes where the sum is actually going to be 10 plus 8 plus 2 equals to 20 and that is what we need to return. Now before we come up with the optimal solution, I'm going to show you a few different concepts with various examples. So first of all, we have an example of tree that looks like this, where in this case all the nodes are positive, which means things are a little bit easy for us and our aim is to find the maximum product sum we can achieve, right? So the idea is at any given portion, we have the root information. Mm -hmm. Now from this root information, what we are going to do is we are going to see that what this left subtree has to offer and what this right subtree has to offer and then addition of all of them should give us our maximum product sum. So in this case, this left subtree does not have any more children. It only has one node, which means it can the maximum value it can contribute towards the maximum path sum is going to be five. So we have the value three already from this root. Then we gain this five from the maximum path sum. And then again, we gain this two from this right subtree. So the total maximum path sum we can achieve is going to be 10, which is the answer in this case. And since all nodes were positive, it is in our favor to include all the nodes. 
so that is one way to do it right and this is a very simple exa example so we are able to understand it quickly now let's try to see that what would be the approach in a little bit more difficult uh scenario so suppose we are given a tree like this in this case we actually have a negative value so if we apply the same logic over here this left subchild has minus 5 to offer this right subchild has plus 2 to offer and this root value is actually 3 so maximum path sum based on the previous logic would actually become 0 if we just do sum of all the values but that is not we are going not what we are going to do we are also going to check at any given moment that whether the value that is being contributed if that is less than 0 or not if that is less than 0 immediately we are going to discard this value which means that we are not going to consider this minus 5 to be part of this maximum product sum and in this case what we are going to do is we are going to do this 3 plus 2 because both values are positive so in this case the answer we are going to get is 5 so we gain one more important thing that whenever we see minus values we are going to ignore that from our maximum production because they don't add any more value over here now one more thing we need to consider what if we uh, we have multiple nodes and then what should be our approach in that case okay suppose we are given an example like this in this case what should be our approach well uh, we, uh, we want to find the maximum path sum so again we are going to repeat the same process we are going to see that for this root node what is this left subtree has to offer it has to offer maximum 5 value so we are good up until this point for this right subtree actually we will have to calculate that what is the maximum value it can offer and how we can do it we are actually going to take this root value because that is going to be the part of this right, uh, right subtree for sure so we already have value as 8 over here now from this 8 we actually have two options to be included for our maximum path sum we can either do 8 2 or we can do 8 1 so in this case obvious choice is going to be 2 because 2 well this value 2 is actually greater than with this value 1 so in this case we are going to ignore this 1 and we are going to keep this 2 which means that we can do 8 plus 2 to be 10 so in this case we can determine that this actually has the value 10 to give towards maximum path sum now the question will come to your mind is that why in this case we only choose value 10 and why not we chose value 11 well what if in under what circumstances can this value become 11 it can become 11 if we include all these three values to be part of this maximum path sum but we already know that this goes through the root value which means that uh, if we were to include all these three values uh, to make the value 11 it won't work because then the path would look like this it would go from 5 to 3 okay so far we are good then again through 8 now from this 8 we cannot include both 1 and 2 because suppose we try to do it we include this 1 and then we try to go back to 2 we come up at this 8 again and we know that that cannot be part of a path sum so that is why we only have the option to choose either 1 or 2 so that is the important important detail over here that is why for when we were calculating the maximum contribution this right subtree can make we can, we only had two options either we could do 8, 8 plus 2 or we could do 8 plus 1 but not both of them so th just remember that that is why i showed you this example so in this case the maximum contribution we can get from this right subtree is going to be 10 so now let's calculate the maximum path sum in this case so the maximum path sum is going to be the root node is 3 plus this left subtree can contribute value 5 and plus this right subtree can contribute value 10 so the answer is going to be 18 and this is what we need to return in this case so so far we have understood we had gained very good understanding of many different cases now let's consider one more case where the things become a little bit more interesting and why it becomes interesting because so far we are under the impression that we have to take this root value as part of the answer but what if that is not the case what if we encounter some possibility where this root value does not need to be part of the main uh, maximum path sum that we take then how do we approach that so let me quickly show you an example for that as well okay this is the last complicated example now in this case we are again going to apply the same logic to find the maximum path sum but we are going to do some interesting things so first of all we have this root value to be minus 3 right now we are going to see that what is the leftmost contribution it can get it can get 3 as a, as the contribution in this case now again for this portion we are going to see that what is the rightmost contribution it can get the rightmost contribution it can get in this case is going to be this 8 plus 2 so 8 plus 2 is going to be 10 so far right now if we see over here actually this is not the most optimal way to approach this why because 
this path actually gives us the maximum path sum so let's see that how can we actually determine that well when we are traversing we are actually going to have a variable called path to keep track of what is the current maximum value we have found so far and whether do we need to include a new route and new route in this case is going to be the condition where we actually refrain away or move away from the original route we were using because if we were to use this root node there is no way for us to use all of these three nodes uh, so that's why we are what we are going to do is we are first of all going to see that if we use this current root what is the maximum value we are gaining so the maximum value we are gaining in this case is going to be 3 which is this one plus 10 which is the contribution we can get from this right subtree so 3 plus 10 and let me get rid of this maximum path sum for now so 3 plus 10 plus whatever the root value so root value in this case is minus 3 which is in this case the total value is going to be 10 but now when we are traversing or when we were calculating the maximum contribution we can gain from this uh, right subtree where the root node is actually 8 the value maximum we can gain from over here is actually going to be this value 8 plus it has the left its left subtree is contributing value 1 and its right subtree is contributing value 2 so which both are positive values and their total is actually 11 so this is 11 and this is 10 then why are we so keen to keeping this root to be part of the optimal solution we should not put it in the maximum path sum and we are oh, this is exactly what we are going to do then we are going to choose a new path and this new path the value is 11 so then we are going to have a maximum path sum variable where we are going to keep on updating the value and we are going to update the value to be 11 and now it does not have any further no more nodes to check for and then we are going to return this 11 to be the answer and at any given moment whenever we find that the new path we are getting that gives us better answer than whatever the previous answer we were getting then we would update the new path and we will update the value of the path variable so that is one tricky part that we have to understand in this question and now let's see that after understanding all the concepts now let's see that what would be the way to solve this problem uh, the idea is uh, let me clean this up a bit now i'm going to use the same example to quickly walk through this problem uh, so first of all we are at this root position what is the left contribution we can get which is 2 the right contribution we can get in this case it's going to be 10 uh, we actually calculated all of them uh, now the sum of these two is uh, these three is actually going to be uh, 10 only but when we were calculating that uh, we had this path variable where we actually calculated the value of this to be 11 and we updated this path variable and then we are going to have this maximum path value uh, where we are going to keep track of the maximum path we have found so far and in the end because it does not have any more children we are going to return the maximum path to be uh, 11 and this is what the answer we need to return so basically we are taking a bigger uh, problem and then we are uh, dividing it into a bunch of different parts that for this root we are actually see, trying to calculate this left subtree and right subtree then again for this root value we are again calculating this left subtree and right subtree which means we are solving this problem recursively and that is how we are going to approach it and also let me show you the time and space complexity so time complexity in this case is actually going to be big O of n why big O of n because at any given moment we will have to iterate over all the nodes that are present inside this given tree and the space complexity is going to be big O of h where h is the height of the tree so first of all we will need a separate method called max gain to calculate that what is the maximum value we are gaining so for that we are going to create a new method it takes in a, a node as an argument we will also need a maximum sum value so we are going to initialize it as global variable we are going to assign it to the most negative value possible so okay now let's start implementing our max gain function so first of all we are going to have the terminating case that if the given node is equal to null we will return zero if that is not the case we will need the values of left gain and right gain for any any given tree node so we are again going to call the recursive function for that we are going to create a variable called price new path that we are actually going to calculate by using the node value plus whatever the sum of left gain and right gain is now that is done we are actually going to calculate the max sum we are going to compare it with whatever this new path we are calculating and once that is done basically all we will have to do is simply return 
uh, the node value with whatever the maximum value is amongst this left gain or right gain from this max path sum method we will have to uh, call this max gain function so let's do that after all the calculation we are simply going to return whatever the max sum we are able to achieve okay and now let's try to run this code seems like our solution is working as expected let's submit this code and our solution is actually pretty efficient and faster than a lot of other solution and i would be posting this in the comments so you can check it out from there